And let me welcome everybody here on behalf of the whole iMeet team. And uh, this session is um, a late edition, uh, but one that was requested. As Tim pointed out, the person requested it can't be here, but uh, I hope everyone else gets something out of it. Um, and I guess most, of, yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I guess most of you already know Tim. Tim's heavily involved in the Moodle development and um, and I was thinking about it, it's very well respected by all the Moodle developers. Um, he certainly does know his stuff. And um, yeah, he's got, he's got a lot to share. So uh, looking forward to this, Tim. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Hi. Um, thanks, Shane. Um, I'm probably going to turn off the video quite soon because we're doing a lot of screen sharing. And that's going to use all the bandwidth, I guess. Uh, but I just thought I'd say hello. Um, yeah, someone. Um, said that they was disappointed that there weren't many developer sessions uh, so uh, and I thought we could do this and actually um, at Edinburgh at the Hackfest I kind of volunteered Sam Marshall to do this at the Hackfest and that seemed only fair I try and do it now okay let's kill the video for now I guess it's that button so if you haven't already organized your screen to make the sort of screen sharing window as big as possible, you probably want to do that um, because the whole thing is going to be screen sharing. Um, very quickly this morning I put together this list. Um, let's start. I start with an overview, um, I guess. So from a developer's point of view, Moodle is a whole lot of code. Um, you can see the code on GitHub, which is a place where a lot of open source projects publish their code. Um, there's a whole lot of folders, um, which is all you know, it's just a whole lot of folders and files. And the other view of the code is the history, um, which tends to get called commits. So <clears throat> um, a commit is basically a change to the code, um, which might look like this. What you can see here is that this change added two lines of code. It, added, it affected this file, changed one file, added two lines. It added this line of code and it added this line of code. Um, other changes are more complicated. Let's go back to the list. There must be something more complicated here. Oh, yes, this was great. Um, there was a bug in the 2.7 release that I introduced, and Eric Merrill fixed it for me. So as you can see here, Eric got rid of this line and added this line. Well, or to look at it another way, he added the, the ID at the start of there. So um, Moodle development is all about changing the Moodle code. Um, but if you go and look at the statistics, um, you will see that kind of millions of people around the world rely on Moodle for their education. So we can't just let every, anyone change the code. Uh, we need a sort of review process to make sure that only good changes get in. Um, so I put a link here. There's a very scary diagram that's probably not going to fit on the screen. Uh, yeah, that's not doesn't fit at all. Um, but it's in roughly I don't know, it's in a number of stages. The first stage is someone reports a bug. Um, this bug came from Jean-Michel Vedrin, who is a uh, science teacher in France. He's someone I know very well. He's fixed a lot of quizzes, bugs in the quiz himself, and he reported this one. And actually, he originally intended to fix it himself, but then he got busy. Uh, and he actually gave a very technical bug report. He's pretty much told us what we need to change in the code to fix it. Other bug reports are much more normally from the user's point of view. So we have a bug report. Um, and all the bug reports come into this system, the Moodle bug tracker, um, which anyone can access. Um, yes, yeah, so let's go and look at my dashboard. So 
normally when you log into the tracker, you get a front page that displays certain information. Because I work here a lot, I, you can customize that view, and I've customized it very heavily to show the things I'm interested in near the top. So you, know, you can run queries to get lists of bugs, and you can get links to individual bugs and so on. But then eventually you find a particular bug that you want to work on. So stage one is the bug gets reported um, and it goes in the tracker and someone checks it out to make sure it's a good quality bug report. Eventually, and this can take anything from minutes to years, um, a developer will come along and decide it's time to fix this bug, like I've decided to fix this bug now. Now the Moodle bug tracker is a system specifically designed for managing issues in software. It's called Jira, and sadly, it's not open source. It's closed source. But they let open source projects use it for free, which is a very good marketing move on their part. Anyway, the developer fixes the bug, and we'll do that in a minute. And when they think they're done, they package up their changes as a commit, one of these things in Git we were just browsing on GitHub. And then they have to get another developer to review the code in what is called peer review. Another developer reviews the code and confirms they also think it's good. So at the point where two developers think the code is good and ready to go, it gets submitted for integration. Uh, an integration is a final sort of review done by Moodle at headquarters in Perth. Well, actually, the integration team includes people like Eli Lafrente in Spain um, and Sam Hamorick in New Zealand. So it's a sort of global team doing the final review of code before it gets into Moodle. Once they've reviewed it, and this is done on a weekly cycle, so on Monday they look at all the things that have been submitted for integration and are waiting, and they put them in a big pile, and they sort through them, they check they're OK, and if they're OK, they add them to what's going to be next week's release. That's on Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, the people, the other developers at Moodle HQ test all of the issues. Um, we'll give a bit more about that later. And when, it, when it's being tested, they say you know, it's, it's tested. And if they find a problem, it goes back. And you have to try and either you try and fix the problem that week, or it has to be kind of the change is undone, and it goes back for a future week. And once everything for that week has been tested, which should happen on Thursday, but sometimes actually happening on Friday, they make the weekly releases. Um, so every week there is a new version of Moodle with all the latest bug fixes and new features. And then every two months they take one of those weekly releases from Thursday or Friday, and if no one finds any problems over the weekend, then on Monday they say, right, this is Moodle, I don't know, 2.6.3 or whatever it is they just released. So that's a broad overview of the process. Now let's actually try to do it. Um, before we were browsing the Moodle code in the web browser on GitHub, but that's not a viable place to work. To do work, you need to download the code to your own computer. <coughs> oh, that's interesting. I appear to be in the middle of something. Um, So um, on my computer, <coughs> I've got the place I do all my work. And as you can see, I've got <laughs> well, every version of Moodle back to Moodle 1.8. Um, but you normally work on the master branch, um, which because I've been doing this for a long time, I've still called the head branch, which is what it was called in CVS. So I'm in my Moodle head folder, and there's all the Moodle code there. And to manage code, we use this command called git. So if I say git, and git does, well, well, we'll be using git a lot. So as you can see, I'm set up. Um, one thing git can do, I've got, I've got a copy of everything on my computer. But first, we need to get the latest version of the code from Moodle HQ. I don't know if I'm up to date or not. No, I'm not. There's some new code which it's fetching. Um,
So um, I'm just using Git to get all the latest changes from Moodle HQ's version into my version. Um, so there you go. So my version of Moodle, while well, I've now got the code up to date, I should probably go to my Moodle site, which I haven't opened yet. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how many people, I should probably have done some introductory stuff at the start. Um, I don't know how many people here administer a Moodle site, uh, but if you run a Moodle site, you'll know that <clears throat> What you do when you update the code, well, first you update the code on the server's hard disk, and then you go to the Moodle admin page, and it will automatically update itself. You can see here I last did this a few weeks ago before the Moodle 2.7 release. Now Moodle 2.7 has been released, and we're starting work towards Moodle 2.8. Um, so if you've never seen how Moodle updates itself before, this is it. You click through a bunch of screens, and behind the scenes, it updates the database structure if necessary. This is a development site, so I've turned on all the kind of debugging options that let you change the code and have it immediately take effect. Um, uh, so it's slower than a normal Moodle site. <clears throat> so Richard, yes, uh, basically to contribute to Moodle, all you need to know is PHP and Git. Um, and of course, I mean, the word contribute can mean many things. Oh, that's interesting. There's an error there. I'll ignore it for now. I mean, contributing code is one sort of thing you might contribute, but um, testing is another thing. Um, I, you may know that a few weeks ago they released Moodle 2.7, and in the weeks before that they asked people in the community to volunteer to test different parts of Moodle. So testing is another way to contribute. Um, reporting bugs is a contribution. If something's broken, we want to know about it. So going into the bug tracker, searching to see if an issue has already been reported, and if it hasn't been reported, creating a new bug report. That's very helpful. So here is. Moodle localhost, I don't know, you know, people, some people will know this, but localhost means that this is a server running on this laptop I'm also using for the presentation. And this is my test Moodle site. So we've got an up to date copy of the code. We've got an installation running that code while we'll be able to test things as we change them. So now let's go and have a look at this bug we're trying to fix. So as I say, this particular bug was reported in a rather technical way. Um, not, I mean, normally you would get a bug report that describes the symptoms from a user's point of view. Um, <clears throat> but the basic issue is that, um, well, from a user's point of view, it's not saving some certain preferences. So um, to see this in a Moodle in, in the Moodle interface, we need to find a course with a quiz. Ah, oh, Farnan, great, you made it. Um, Farnan was the person whose request led to this session happening at all, so you can all thank him. Um, I'm just. <coughs> So yes, actually on this laptop, um, there are two ways you can do it. Um, you can either have one database with lots of different prefixes for the different versions of Moodle. Actually, I think on this laptop, I've got, I use MySQL and I create a separate database for each install. It doesn't matter which way you do it, you, both are possible. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a quiz with some attempts so we can see the reports, because this bug affects the quiz reports. So it's, it's an important skill for a developer that's really nothing to do with writing code, but it's to do with um, when someone reports a bug from the user's point of view in the Moodle interface, knowing which parts of the Moodle code might be responsible for that bug, or conversely, um, 
when when you see a problem in the code, working out if you change this bit of code, knowing which bits of the Moodle user interface might be affected. Now, what this bug is about is there's this setting about what this report is in the quiz. It shows normally for each student what grade they got and then the grade for each question. But it's a setting whether it shows the grade for each question, we can turn that off. <coughs> You see, now we've turned that off, we just see the total grade. Um, and that's setting it off. If we now go to a different quiz, in order to fit in the screen sharing, I've had to make my browser window very small. And Moodle's design is now meant to be responsive, but it's not doing a very good job of this particular screen size. It's, it's quite hard to see things. Um, when we go to this other quiz, um, this setting has now turned back on again, and we've got these columns over at the right. Um, that's not how it's supposed to work. What should be going on is when you change this setting, it should be storing that as a user preference. And then next time you go to a quiz, um, it will remember how you like that setting set. Um, <clears throat> and that's what's not working right. <clears throat> and as sometimes happens in the Moodle world, when someone reports a bug, they're a developer themselves, and they can point out the problem in the quiz, <clears throat> in, in the code. And the problem with this bit of code is if you look, the place where it sets the preference to store it in the database, it's using one name. And in the other place where it reloads the preference, it's using a different name, which is why the value that's stated in the database isn't being used later. So this is going to be a very simple bug to fix, and it's why I said we'd fix this one. We just need to change one of those names so that they're the same. And if you look down, we had a bit of a discussion this, um, and of the two names, I prefer the shorter one. So now we need to go and make this change in the quiz code. Um, so it's in the quiz overview report, and we need to change the longer one in the setup from user preferences function. <clears throat> now to edit the code, you need some sort of editor. Uh, and there are two schools of thought on this. Some people. Um, like me, like to use what's called an integrated development environment, which means that it includes everything you might need. So you see over here on the left, we've got a thing that lets you navigate around all the folders of code. Whoops. Um, we need to be in, obviously, as an experienced developer, you learn your way around the um, code. Um, so I'm, this affects the quiz activity, so look in mod quiz, it affects a report. I mean, once you know your way around, the layout of the Moodle code is really very logical. And this report that shows all the grades is called the overview. And I happen to know that the bit of code affected is this um, options class. Maximize that. Um, and it was in the save user preferences function. Isn't, yeah, yes it is. Yeah. So there's the set called what's using the correct name. And here is the get call that was using the wrong name. And if I copy that over, then the set and the get should work together. So, and when I say something in an integrated development environment, what I mean is, suppose, as you can see, if I put my mouse over this function, it will tell me a bit about the function. The doc and also, I can hold down Control. Can I? It's supposed to be the case that if I hold down the Control and click on the function name, it will jump me there. But actually, I remember now, that's broken on this computer, which is annoying. Um, <coughs> So anyway, we've done this change in the code. If I just undo it and redo it, you can see it was just changing this bit. 
so we've changed the code. Now we need to go back to the terminal window and do, use some more git commands to um, make this into a commit. So probably the most useful command is git status, which tells you what's currently going on. So you can see we're on branch master, and we've just edited this file. And if we type git diff, it will tell us what we've edited. You can see we've changed this one line of code. We've changed that to that, which is what we thought we'd done. Um, so now we need to prepare this as a commit, and we, we're going to have to submit this to be reviewed. Um, so it's not really re until it's been reviewed, it can't go in the main version of Moodle. So to get prepare it for review, what we do is we create a new branch. Um, and the convention is that you call the branch after the bug you're trying to fix, 44333. So, yeah. three, three, three. so make a branch with the same name as the bug and switch to it. Um, So now we're on that branch and we've got this changed file. We want to commit those changes. So we tell Git those are the changes we want. And then you'll see Git status will tell us these changes are ready to be committed. And then we say Git commit. I'm actually doing this in a slow way, um, one step at a time. There are more efficient Git commands that will let you do several things at once. Now, when you fix a bug, as part of the commit, you have to add a brief comment to explain what you've done. Um, so in future, if someone's wondering why the code is the way it is, they can look back and see why you changed it. Who, well, they can go and see who last changed each line of code and why. And in Moodle, to help with this, there's the rule that when you, you always start your commit comment with the bug number, and then you say where it is. Um, and then you have to summarize it in one line. Uh, and I just need to refer to what it's called in the middle user interface. Uh, marks for each question. Right. So you need one line summary first. Uh, and then you can write a bit more. That's probably a good enough um, explanation of the fix we just did. So we save that. Now um, I can't get status. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can see now we're on this branch and everything, everything, all the work in progress has been committed. And if I type git show, it will show me the most recent commit. Here you can see the commit. I did it on Sunday. There's the comment I just typed, and there's the change I made. Um, so there we go. And that now all that work so far has been on my computer. Now I need to put it somewhere where other people can see it. So you do that with git push, and I'm going to push it to my space on GitHub, which I refer to like that. So that then transfers the change to GitHub. And now if we go back to my web browser, we can go to MySpace on GitHub. <clears throat> so here's my copy of the Moodle code on GitHub. And it's intelligent. It can see that I've just made a new branch a minute ago, and that's probably the one I want to look at. So we can click that button, 
and we can see again it's exactly the same commit but now we're looking at it in a web browser so it looks slightly different but there we go exactly the same change so so now I think I've done a correct fix for this bug and now we need to tell people that so we go back to the bug report in the Moodle bug tracker which is where all the work gets sort of reported on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to request someone to review it so what I need to do is I need to say that Here's where the code is in Git. My area on GitHub, and it's on that branch, and that's the URL you can see to review it. I need to be polite, but normally sometimes remember. So whenever you change a bug, um, you need to, again, it's good practice to leave a comment saying what you're doing. Now, before we save this and actually request peer review, there's one other thing we need to do as a developer. Um, we know that's a very good question, and I was going to come to that in a minute. Um, another thing that Moodle requires whenever you make a change to the code is you have to describe how to test this change you've made to prove it's safe. So we need to describe that testing I did earlier. To test this, you need two different um, Moodle quizzes with some student attempts. So step one is um, go to getting what the setting is called. Change the marks for each question setting in fact. No. Uh, go back to the course page. So hopefully step by step that describes um, how someone would need to test this bug. Okay, so we've got the testing instructions, we've got the information about the change in the code, and I'm ready to request peer review. Now, what I'm hoping is that someone else in the audience is another developer, because any other developer is allowed to peer review an issue. 
So, um, would one of the developers in the audience, and I know there are some, like to volunteer to be the peer reviewer for this issue? Right, while well, Gareth is doing the peer review, um, I don't think you should sh uh, screen share Gareth, but do you want to turn on your audio and tell us what you're doing? Okay, so I can see from the chat people are discussing the question of which versions of Moodle should this be fixed in. And Hi guys, one moment, I'm just <clears throat> logging in. The rules are, there are basically two cases. So there are two cases. One, if it's a new feature, it should only go into a... Sorry. Sorry, Gareth, I'm talking over you. No, 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 sorry. I, uh, I just said I've logged in. I'm changing the peer reviewer to me. Like, so... Yep, so Gareth's it's just assigned you... himself as peer reviewer. Uh, I'm now looking at the peer... Start the peer review button. I'm now looking at the thing called the peer review checklist. Yes, I had a link for that in the course. So um, there are various bits of guidelines about how you do Moodle development. There's there's a page of documentation telling you how to use Git. There's a whole lot of stuff about how you should lay out the code so Moodle's code is all consistent. What Gareth is looking at is this peer reviewing checklist. He's just put the link there. And when you're reviewing someone else's code, this is a reminder of all the things that you ought to think about checking. And of course, as the developer, I should already have thought about these things and got them right. Gareth should just be confirming I've got them right, but he may have some concerns where I haven't done things well. Then, you know, there's so there's lots done. of detail about what those things in the checklist do. Okay, what I've done is I've, I've looked at the code, I've looked at the link, I'm now going through the checklist to think about, you know, is it sanity check? Is it, well, is it looking all right? Yeah. Now, yeah, for the purposes of this, I'm going to say fine, but I'm looking at the, you know, I'm looking at the difference uh, link, which, so I'm looking at this one and then using that to help me with the checklist. So I'm looking for syntax faults, I'm looking for anything. Uh, also think with the coding standard in my mind as well, uh, which is elsewhere. Somebody else can provide a link to that. I'm, uh, so as Tim got on the screen there, I think there's only obviously a very clear thing there doing a sanity check. I was going to think about you know, what's the impact of it. So with more time, I'd look into how this goes. I might take uh, a copy of this branch and test it on my own Moodle and be satisfied for myself that it does what it says. So, uh, okay, syntax looks all right, so that's a yes. Uh, white space, there's nothing afterwards. Uh, you may also put it through Tim's uh, code checker module, if Tim would like to talk about that for a second, I'll just fill in the rest of the blanks. I'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, output, I can't tell what that. There's no language, so that's dots. Uh, yeah, look at the thing there. No databases involved. Testing. So for testing, I'm going to look back at the tracker issue. Is there a yes? There is testing instructions, and they do make sense. Yes, I don't believe it's a security. I don't believe documentation is relevant. Git. So the Git is the commit line. Yep, that looks 80 characters. It's got a prefix of the Moodle um, tracker number. It has also got the details and then a cut of the module, the area that it's in with the colon, and then details about what it's doing after that. Um, so that's fine. There is no third party code. Sanity check. Uh, it's fine, it's just, you know, does it do anything silly, does it not do anything silly? I happen to know from my own knowledge of learning the code 
that this is just sort of get user preferences. So it just, this is just fixing something. So the get user preference code, the thing in the bit of text quiz report, sorry, quiz overview slot marks will match the set uh, or the associated set. So I can go away and check that, but I, I trust him and that's all fine. So I say, yes, that's all looks fine. I add the comments. So Tim, if you'd like to refresh, you should see that. Ah, like me, you forgot to click the buttons at the top that say start peer review and end peer oh, review. Oh, fudge. fudge. Yes, indeed. Maybe got uh, the bad. Well, that. That. You just go straight in, you start looking at the code. So anyway, let's, well, um, down here at the bottom is that comment um, Gareth just added saying lots of, because it's such a small change, many of the things on the checklist just aren't relevant and the other things get, he's all happy with. Um, that's all good, and now maybe uh, click the buttons. So if you do a refresh. Yeah. Yes, please. so it now says peer review okay. in progress. I do my peer review. I then click on finish peer review, and that's where I maybe put a comment in, imagine that. If Tim, you can refresh. So as well as doing the checklist, you should probably add in a sort of overview that you think this is ready for integration. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing to say. There are different levels of access in the bug tracker. Um, as someone who's been around for an awful long time, I have quite a high level of access, so I'm seeing slightly more buttons than Gareth. And in particular, I, because I'm component lead for the quiz, I see this submit for integration. So now, now that it's part of peer review, I can submit it for integration. But now we need to come back to the this question that was asked earlier, which versions of Moodle should we fix this in? And we we'll always submit the fix to the very latest version, but this is a bug. Oh, so yes, I got halfway through that, then Gareth was doing the peer review. So there are two cases really. One, is it a new feature? And if it's a new feature, it just goes in ready for the next version of Moodle, it'll be Moodle 2.8. If it's a bug, and this is a bug, then it should be fixed in all the supported stable branches, which, um, and normally Moodle supports two stable branches, so that'll be Moodle 2.7 and 2.6. But actually, because we're only just past the 2.7 release, I think we're still supporting Moodle 2.5. So we're going to submit the fix for all those three branches, and as you can see down here, there's now space for all the branch information. Um, so we need to make branches now that are related to Moodle 2.6 and Moodle 2.5. And we need to go back and do some more work in Git. And there's a question, um, sometimes you will do this before you submit it for peer review. Um, at other times, you wait till the peer review is commented before you do this. So what we need to do now is go to one of my other Moodle installs. Um, on, it doesn't matter what you call them, this is just how I call them. And again, we need to make sure it's up to date. This is a non standard git command. It basically strings together a bunch of st other things um, quickly. Um, I wrote a blog post, and there's a link on the course page about this sort of automation to make things quicker. Um, so that's updated it. Um, <coughs> So what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to go and fetch all the latest changes from my area on GitHub. Um, and there's a whole lot of branches here because there was some stuff I did at work during the week. Um, but there you can see one of the things it fetched, new branch, was, was oops, it, that's, that's the branch we just made that relates to Moodle, the latest development version of Moodle. What I'm going to do now now is make another branch. Um, oops. And what I want to do now is I want to take the same change that I made in the MDL 4333 branch and do it here. And there's a git. Um, 
one for that. There's a good kick one for everything. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go a bit like that. Um, sometimes this doesn't, yeah. <coughs> Am I going to try and explain this in detail? The effect of this git command is we now have a commit that looks just like the other one, but rather than being relative to the master branch, it's now on top of the Moodle 2.6 branch. Um, and I, I agree I haven't explained that very well, but I'm not sure I can do any better right now. Whoops. Uh, what? Sorry. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> right, so that's made a version of the fix, bug fix for Moodle 2.6. And in a, we now need to do the same thing for Moodle 2.5. And I need to try and explain what's going on a little bit better. Right. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at this commit, we've got a commit, uh, which is a change in the code, and the commit Builds on top of the previous thing in history, which is the weekly release of Moodle 2.8 um, last Thursday. So this commit here is last week's weekly release, and the change I just did is on top of that, and that's Moodle 2.8 development. Um, now, there's a separate branch, which is... Um, The code for Moodle 2.6 lives on a different branch called Moodle 2.6 stable, um, which is completely different. And so <clears throat> I need to do a version of my change on this other Moodle thingy 2.6 branch that relates to Moodle 2.6 stable. And that's what I did using that cherry pick command. I still don't think I've explained that very well, but it's the best I can do. And um, we need to do the same thing for Moodle Right, that's a very good question, Richard. Um, what what Cherry Pick is actually doing is fairly simple. Um, we saw before there was the command git diff. Uh, um, which will compare two things and show you what's changed. And given a diff like that, there's another command called git apply, um, and what git apply does will take a description of a change like that and apply it. Oh, oops. and apply it to the code. Uh, 
So you see, it's Git apply has made exactly the same change on this branch. Now, as you say, if, if, if in this version of Moodle that line of code was different, then Git apply wouldn't be able to manage it, um, which is fair enough. And if that happens, Git says it's got a merge conflict, it, the word it uses, and it basically it does what it can. And the other things, it just says, look, this is the old version of the code. This is what it's supposed to be like. I can't work it out. You, you have to go and sort it out yourself. So if things have changed too much and Git can't do it automatically, then um, you need to fix the problem yourself, which is fair enough. And what's amazing is how infrequently um, that actually happens. In terms of, oops. Right. So actually, without using Git cherry pick, by using too much more manual Git commands, we've managed to make a new commit um, with those changes. And it doesn't actually, I mean, I'm calling the branches certain things because that's the convention I use. Other people use slightly different things. So now if we go back to this bug report, we can now, we've now created branches for the other versions. As you can see, my branch naming convention is designed to make it as easy as possible to copy and paste and auto-complete things. Um, so the text, everything good, being peer-reviewed. So once we've got all the different versions ready to be submitted, we can submit for integration. And now you see it says waiting for integration review. We saw before there are various dashboards in the tracker. Um, some of these are standard ones that anyone can access. So for example, it's Moodle integrating dashboard is something the Moodle integration team have created and shared over the world. Um, and you can see here that, wow, the next week there are 60 bugs and features waiting to be integrated. And on Monday, they will go through all these changes and review them and hopefully integrate them, or they'll find a problem and pick them back. So that's as far as we can get now. But let's just see that our change, where was it? It should be a quiz bug. It's probably one of these minor quiz bugs. Yep. Uh, yes, th th there's the bug we just fixed waiting to be integrated next week. And <clears throat> to log into the bug tracker, you need to sign up with a username and with an email address, and you can make up your password. So you, if you haven't got a tracker account, you can create one. And if you have got a tracker account, you can add yourself as a watcher and if you watch an issue, then you will get an email every time it changes. Um, so if you're interested, you could you could sign into the tracker and make yourself a watcher, and then you'll get an email next week that tells you whether this my fix was any good or not. Um, but that's as far as we can get for today. Um, so let me try and summarize what happened. So I'll just say, in, in, this is the this is the iMoot course for this presentation, and I put in a lot of useful links. Um, I've written a couple of bug, bug, blog posts over the years, one of which does describes exactly what we've just been through, all the things about fixing a bug in gruesome detail. So you don't need to remember what I've told you. You can go and read that. There's another blog post I wrote about making working with Git more efficient. Uh, and that's a very waffly blog post about the process of fixing a bug. Um, that was the Moodle process, uh, Moodle development process page I linked to with the complex and scary um, flowchart. Um, this page describes the Moodle 
release process, uh, sorry, the, all the Moodle releases, there are a number of pages that describe how the tra bug tracker works. And that's a good question, David. I'll answer it in a minute. Um, actually, there's a bit about what will happen next week when they test the integration issues. Um, and then for doing the actual development, um, there's, I gave a link to the code on GitHub. Um, there's another page on Moodle Docs that tells you how to use Git. I see someone linked to the Git for Administrators page, which is useful, but if you're doing development, that Git for Developers is very useful. Um, <coughs> Gareth talked about the coding style. Um, this is now a very long page that explains in detail exactly how you should lay out your Moodle code. Um, you may think this is overly fussy, but the point is that um, the Moodle code is now worked on by a lot of people all around the world. I think Dan Petowski did the statistics, and I think 104 different people contributed something that went into Moodle 2.7. Um, and over the years, the total number of people who've contributed is over 500. So to make to make the code keep the code clean, there are very strict rules about how you format the code. And if you everyone formats their code the same way, it's mu much easier for everyone to read it and understand it. Um, and the standard of the Moodle code is now very high. So this page explains in very great detail how to lay out everything that might be in your Moodle code. Um, so if you want to contribute code, you need to read this and you need to follow it. Um, that may sound difficult, but there is a plugin to help you. And I forgot to give the link there. There is a plugin in the plugins database. Uh, called Code Checker. <coughs> which originally I made, and then Moodle HQ have adopted it. Um, what Code Checker does, and I suppose I can d demonstrate it. So what Code Checker does, oh, stupid thing. Normally use Firefox, which has much better autocomplete. Um, yes, so you give it the name of a follower, so whether we were can we run model quiz report. And what it will do is it, it doesn't check everything, but it checks a lot of the rules in the Moodle coding style against your code um, and tells you if you've got anything wrong. Let's see if the quiz code is any good. Mm, pretty good, but there are still some problems. Oh, and this is the world's most annoying rule. Um, at one point, Eloy, Eloy decided it would be a good idea to enforce grammar, so all your comments have to finish with a full stop. Uh, and as you can see, I didn't bother to do that. Oh, and there again, you know, it's very picky. So there's a function, and it contains two empty lines of code following each other, and you're not supposed to do that, and it's telling you that. Um, oh, and there, here again, it's saying that the, the, the arrow symbol, when you've got an array literal, should have a space before it, and I didn't, and again, missing space there. So as you can see, it's very, very picky, but it is a good way to lo learn the Moodle coding style, because you just run it against your <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Shane. Um, you know, 
if you actually want to learn the coding style, it's very useful because you can write your code, it will tell you what's wrong, and then you have to fix it. So it's, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing I like because it's like the quiz module, right? You, you, you give it your thing and it gives you personalized feedback that tells you what you're doing wrong so you can get better. You know, just like JS Linux. Um, so that's Code Checker. If you want to submit code to Moodle Core, then it's worth installing it because you need to get it right. Um, but I want to point out that when, when I was working on that bug fix, I just changed one line of code. It would actually have been bad if I had gone in and changed, fixed all these coding style problems because those would have been irrelevant changes. And then rather than being a one line change to fix the bug, it would have had all these other unrelated changes and it would be much harder for someone else to understand. So if I wanted to fix these coding style problems, it would be better if I did it as a separate commit. But anyway, it's actually good that there were some problems here because it shows you the kind of um, things that um, get picked up. Uh, Gareth was also reminding me of another thing. They've actually integrated the code checker with the bug tracker now. Um, so now, actually, when you normally we were too quick for it. Normally, when you submit code to be peer reviewed, it gets automatically checked by the code checker. And add that magic label; it will get checked now. Give that a few minutes. I was just trying to sum up. So that's coding style and code checker plugin. Gareth talked to us about the peer reviewing checklist. I showed you the integration dashboard. Now, um, another thing to point out this is something I don't use because I've never bothered to learn, but lots of people use it now. Um, it's called MDK Moodle Development Kit. And it has lots of useful shortcuts for doing things like installing a test Moodle site or copying a bug fix from one branch to another. I'm old school. I'd still do it manually myself. Um, but if you're new to Moodle development, it's probably worth learning this tool. So I added a link to that because I think it's worth knowing about even if I'm too lazy to learn it myself. Um, now, there were some good questions. Uh, Richard said he was excited to to fix bugs and that's exactly right um it's not that e difficult particularly if you start with easy bugs um There was another question I said I'd answer the later, and I don't know if I did. And maybe that was a comment about code checker. I'm not going back just to forget about bugs and that one, one person works on fixing them. Shane raises the point that if you're not used to working in an open source world, yeah, as Gareth says, you know, the thing about open source, as we've seen, all the code I, you know, the code I just wrote is immediately available on GitHub. Anyone in the world could have a look at it. If I did something stupid, everyone in the world could see that. And um, I can't think of a specific example now, but I have certainly done uh, silly things in the code in the past. Um, actually, well, we, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, actually, that's a fact of life. I mean, if you work so carefully and so slowly that you never, never, never made a mistake, then actually you would be working very inefficiently. Um, you have to accept that. You know, to get on with things, you, you do you do work with a reasonable amount of care, um, but sometimes you're going to make mistakes. And actually, it's really good that you have the peer reviewer, you have the integration review. There are two other lines of defense 
before it gets into Moodle and causes anyone in, any inconvenience. And yet, if you've made a mistake, they will point it out. I think it's good that Mo yeah, Moodle is an educational product, right? Um, and we all know that the way you learn is you learn from feedback. And what you'll actually get from working in an open source world is you get a lot of feedback. Um, uh, often, in other situations, you just will not get. And yeah, I mean, by and large, people in the Moodle world are very constructive. Yeah, they're good at giving positive, constructive criticism. Uh, I have to say, if there's someone who's not very good at that, it's probably me. Um, but actually, also, if I, you know, if I get a bug, if I see a fix from someone like Dan Patowski, who works from Moodle HQ, is a really high-class developer. If I see he's some, done something. And yeah, he's a mate of mine. If he's done something stupid, I'll tell him he's done something stupid because um, we know each other well and we can abuse each other. If I see a patch submitted submitted by someone who's you know a name I don't recognise, someone who hasn't contributed much to Moodle in the past, then if I need to tell them politely that they've not quite done it right, then I will be more polite. Uh, so that's my take on it. It's actually. If you want to develop as a develop, you know, if you want to get better as a developer, contributing to an open source product project will give you a level of feedback that it's very hard to get any other way. So it's it's really excellent um, and feedback at all levels, there's the detail of the code, but also when you're planning at something new, you can get feedback on your design. Yeah, actually, Gary, but the other, that's the other thing. I mean, the kind of people who will be rude, someone like, uh, shall I name names? Yeah, Petr Skoda is uh, from the Czech Republic, has been a Moodle developer for even longer than me, and he has a fairly abrasive manner. But what's particularly annoying is when uh, when Petr tells you you've been an idiot, he's right and you're wrong. So, uh, um, you know, I've learned a lot from Petr, and yeah, um, you just take it. Um, does anyone else want to add anything? I don't know, Gareth, have you submitted code to Moodle in the past and how did you find it? I think, yeah, uh, loads. Um, that one you can see, 44850. Uh, I've also got some ongoing ones. And I, sometimes I found it incredibly frustrating because it took so long, but then it come back and reflect that it's this is really important that it's right and mistakes don't happen. So even though I found it painful and annoying, I think, oh on earth, why on earth did I make that X blah 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 mistake? It's it's a necessary thing to go through this very, very stringent process because the impact of a mistake, especially critical one going through, is absolutely dire. Uh, especially to undo it. Um, it's also, I think it's still making me a better coder. I, I'm still learning PHP. I believe that all developers have still got something to learn, that however good you are, you can always learn something from someone else. Uh, it's helping me to understand UEJS a little bit more. Yeah, sorry, go on. Take, for example, that one, that EOT um, font. Well, today we sort of process work very. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the, the, the peer review guide is worth it. Uh, I've peer reviewed a few of Mary Evans's. Is. Uh, tracker issues and it makes you to reflect and it, it's it's a good process. It's a very rigorous process, I feel. Yes. Um, now there is a problem with it, which, as you said, is it takes too long, and this has been recognised by Moodle HQ. Um, uh, so I mentioned Dan Patowski before. He's one of the integration team. He's a very experienced Moodle developer. Um, and as part of the integration, on behalf of the integration team, he re he started this forum thread in the general developer forum, saying that they they realised they had this problem where the number of things waiting for peer review is getting too large. Actually, if we go back to the bug tracker, um, 
Uh, it's another one of these dashboards, peer review dashboard. Let's see how bad it is at the moment. Um, yeah, so there are 20 things there waiting for peer review, and there are another 12 things where someone started the peer review but haven't finished it yet. So that's a problem. Um, but, and for someone like me who knows a lot of other Moodle developers, it's very easy to twist someone's arm and get a review. But, um, but for a new developer, it can be very difficult, and a lot of, lot of good patches get stuck at this stage, which is a problem. Uh, but it's a problem they're aware of, and they're trying to think what they can do about it. As you say, it's a, the peer review when it happens is good. We just need to make sure it happens. OK, well, um, should we wrap it up about now? OK, but I'll just sort of reiterate that if you want a sort of written out version of what we've just seen, that blog post I wrote um, will take you through the whole process in detail. Uh, it's probably easier to, if you actually want to follow on, it's probably easier to go from a written description than uh, me talking. Um, so thank you, everyone, for your attention. Um, I hope that was at least vaguely amusing. And I guess at least we fixed one more bug in Moodle than there was fixed before. Hey, Tim. Um, Shane here again. I uh, just wanted to thank you for, for doing that. And obviously, it's helped a lot of people. And um, I was actually commenting to Gareth in a, in a back channel that I'm, I was just even just watching you doing your git commands. I was, I was learning some extra little flags, uh, flags and, um, uh, you know, little shortcuts to use. <laughs> That's really good. Um, always something to learn. So thank you very much, Tim. Yeah, thanks, Shane. Can I also say thanks, Tim. That was very brave. That was brilliant. Just to do something live like that is, yeah, I'm not worthy. So thank you. Well, I reckon that even if it went horribly wrong, at least it would be amusing for people. So we couldn't really lose. <laughs>